pieces that we're playing is New England Triptych by William Schumann. It has a very significant timpani part. The first movement is called Be Glad Then America. So with this excerpt that I just performed, it's important to play musically, to play with phrasing and interest so that the listener has something to focus in on. In the same work, there is an extended louder solo, which has a lot of jazz influences. Drums were one of the first instruments in the Marine Band when we started with fifes and drums 200 and something years ago. Uh, I'm playing the snare drum, and because of some of the many different pieces that we're playing, it requires us to have as many different drums as we can. Some are called tenor drums, some are called snare drums. They all have different sizes and pitches. I'd like to demonstrate a piece that we're playing uh, by William Schumann. It's New England Triptych. It's the third movement, Chester. It's actually an excerpt that we play all the time. In fact, it was one of the pieces that we actually had to play to get into the Marine Band. great things about being a percussionist is we get to play all these different instruments and one of the great things about being in a concert band is that the repertoire might ask you to play so many of these different instruments within the same program. Now one of the pieces we've been performing is Vincent Persichetti's Masquerade for Band and for that piece I've been able to play the mallet instruments and while it includes both xylophone and glockenspiel I'm going to be demonstrating some of the xylophone licks for you. Now the cool thing about the xylophone is it can take on many different roles whether it's a more of an accompanying kind of a passage where you might be using softer mallets, or in this case, a lot of soloistic stuff, which is kind of hard, bombastic, and in your face, or maybe a little bit delicate kind of sound effecty stuff. like to give you a demonstration on some of the auxiliary percussion instruments that we play in the section, namely cymbals and gongs. Now you may be familiar with the traditional cymbals that you use in bands and orchestras. They sound something like this. Now I'd like to show you some instruments from China namely the, the Peking opera gongs and the Peking cymbals. They have a totally different sound than our traditional cymbals. They come in different sizes and make different timbres. The pitches are made to represent some of the words that are spoken in the Chinese language.
You can also do other effects with them. So you've seen the Peking Opera cymbals. Now these are the Peking Opera gongs. Now when you think of a gong, you probably think of a large tam-tam that gives you that big booze sound. These sound a little bit different. These actually have a pitch to them, and the pitch, once you strike it, can either bend up or bend down. Let me demonstrate. As you can hear, that bends up. And that one distinctly bends down. Pretty cool, huh? I'd like to tell you about one of the most unusual instruments that we have in our collection. This represents the Deegan staff bells that composer Percy Granger originally wrote for over a hundred years ago. Now, originally this was a novelty instrument that was primarily used during the vaudeville era, but Mr. Granger wanted to incorporate the sound of this into his music as part of what he called tuneful percussion, which basically means um, pitched percussion instruments like marimba, xylophone, bells or glockenspiel, and chimes. So what we have here are Swiss handbells, and they're suspended on a rack, and I'm going to be playing them with some hard mallets. I'll play for you now an excerpt from Granger's Lincolnshire Posey. <laughs> 